going to talk through biological macromolecules. This could potentially be the most important set of notes you take all year because it is foundational for everything else we will learn in biology. So let's talk about what the heck these important things are. Macromolecules are large organic molecules, meaning that they contain carbon. That's all that really means. And they're used for various functions in living things. We cannot live without them. There are four different types, and you literally can't, if you didn't have one of them, you wouldn't be able to live. So they're super important. Everything we're going to learn for the rest of the semester is going to be based on at least one of these macromolecules. So it's so important that you really pay attention and you learn this now so you're not confused the next few months. All right, so first, some terms we need to understand in order to kind of understand what we're going to go through about each macromolecule is the difference between a monomer and a polymer. So these are words we use to describe the structure of a macromolecule. So most macromolecules are polymers and they're built of monomers. So monomers are a small basic unit. I want you to think of like a brick like you see in this picture on the left. Polymers are a complex structure made of monomers. So think of a brick wall or a house. So these monomers are smaller things that build into polymers. So we're going to use these two words to kind of understand the structure of each of the macromolecules as we go through them. So there's four types of macromolecules. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So we're going to go through each one and hit on some essential things you need to know. So first let's talk about those carbs, which you can find in fruit and sugar and pastas and all sorts of good things. So their main purpose is to provide you short-term energy. They're also used for structure, structural reasons in your cells and to give you some support. Mainly we're thinking of them for short-term energy purposes. You can find them in sugar and starch. So I think it's funny as people think carbs are just bad, bad, bad. But, you know, you have sugar in fruits and vegetables. Um, and that doesn't mean they're bad. And, you know, whole grain breads are great too. So don't need to leave this class saying carbs are bad because you need them. You need, need, need them. All right. Looking at the structure of carbohydrates, the monomer is a monosaccharide, so mono referring to one, so single sugar molecule. So we, in this picture, we got a single glucose, a galactose, a fructose, those kinds of things. Those are examples of little simple sugars. We can connect a bunch of those into polymers um, and make polysaccharides or large molecules. So starches and glycogen and cellulose, these are all carbohydrates, just these smaller ones build into these bigger ones. Now, in a carb, there's about four calories of energy per, in every milligram of carbohydrates. And so that number is a little irrelevant for you right now. But as we kind of go through, you'll kind of see why that matters as we go through and talk about the different molecules. Um, but because carbs are short-term energy, your body accesses them, accesses them very easily. So it's always going to be the first thing your body's going to break down when it needs energy. It's going to go to your carbs first and get those four calories out of every milligram. Now let's talk about lipids. The main function of a lipid is long-term energy storage, but they're also used to cushion your organs, to insulate you, to get the hormones in some senses, and to make up the cell membrane, which we'll talk about a lot in our cells unit. Lipids are found in fats and oils and phospholipids, which are what make up the cell membrane, and even steroids. So lots of different things for lipids. They're not just fats and oils. And they're not just bad fats. They're good fats too, like what you find in avocado. All right, the monomer of lipids. There's not really a true monomer or polymer, but in general, most lipids are made of fatty acids, which can be saturated or unsaturated. And um, po the polymer can be fats, it could be oils, phospholipids, steroids, hormones, so many different things. So again, not a really clear monomer or polymer, but those are some examples. The energy storage for a lipid is nine calories per milligram. So it stores twice as much um, energy in each milligram as a carbohydrate does. But the deal is your body, it's going to be your second energy storage. You know, your body's not going to go to it first. It's going to use up all your carbs first, and then when it runs out, it'll burn lipids. Now, a special lipid we want to highlight are phospholipids, and those, these will be so important when we get to cells. But fossil bits are these little things that make up the cell membrane. So this is a section of the cell membrane. You can see they kind of have these little circular heads and then these little tails. And they've got these two layers in the cell membrane. 
But the structure is you get these two fatty acids in this phosphate head. These molecules make up the plasma or the cell membrane. And the phosphate, this head, is hydrophilic, meaning it likes water. And the tails are hydrophobic, meaning they don't like water. And so the way that they're or oriented really matters, which we'll get to when we get to the cell membrane. All right, let's talk about proteins. This is the most diverse macromolecule. They're also the most abundant. About 50% of your cells made up of proteins, which is crazy. They literally run your body. So I want you to get out of your head that proteins are only used for muscles, because that is not true. They are used for so many things, which we'll talk about now. I'm going to give you a bunch of functions of proteins, because there's so many, and you need to know them all. First, proteins can be enzymes. They can control the rates of chemical reactions, which we'll talk about more in a later unit. They can be hormones. They can regulate cell processes. An example of a hormone that's a protein is insulin, which regulates your blood sugar. Again, they are, you are right, they are used to form bones and muscles. Collagen is a protein that makes up those bones. They're also used to transport things in and out of cells. Hemoglobin is a protein that moves um, your blood around. Really, really important. They can be antibodies that help fight off diseases. They can also be just a source of food and source of energy like casein and milk. Um, so those are all things that we use proteins for. They can be found in meats, nuts, Greek yogurt, all sorts of things. Um, in your body, examples of proteins are like hemoglobin and insulin like we mentioned earlier. The monomer, they're made of amino acids. A polymer, we call the polymer of a protein a polypeptide because these amino acids get held together by peptide bonds. So when a bunch of them are bonded together, we call it a polypeptide. We'll learn how to synthesize proteins later in our genetics unit. And then the energy storage is like a carb. It can hold four calories of energy per milligram. But what's really important is this is your body's last result, or your last resort, excuse me. Your body does not want to break down proteins for energy because like you saw, there's so many other important things that they're used for. And so your body is not going to do this unless it absolutely has to. It'd rather break down carbs and lipids for energy first. Now, there's a really complex structure to proteins. They have these four levels of structure that we're not really going to get into. But what's important is the, that they fold into these really specific structures. And the folding matters because the form or the shape of the protein dictates or determines the function of the protein. So the shape determines what it does and then what its specific purpose is. And so that's all I really want you to know about that, but that is important. All right, last but not least are nucleic acids. So the purpose of a nucleic acid is to store and transmit or transfer your hereditary or genetic info. Two types of nucleic acids are your DNA and your RNA. You get these from your parents, not your foods. So this is important. When you eat a hamburger, you're getting protein from that hamburger. You're not eating the hamburger to get the DNA from the cow to run your body. That's not the case at all. So this is the one macromolecule that we kind of separate from the others in terms of getting them from food. The structure. The monomer are called nucleotides. Um, there's five of them, A, G, T, C, and U. We'll learn all about their long names later. These monomers, these nucleotides, are made of five carbon sugars, phosphates, and nitrogen bases, or nitrogenous bases. And we'll, again, we'll talk about this more in our genetics unit. The polymer is just nucleic acid, so nothing else you need to know. It's just a bunch of nucleotides make up a nucleic acid. This picture here is one nucleotide. That's one nucleotide right there. So a bunch of those put together can make up a nucleic acid. Now, in terms of energy, there are zero calories of energy in a milligram of nucleic acid. There's, they just don't even store energy. So it's not even an option for energy for your body. They're never going to be broken down for energy ever, ever, ever. And they don't even have any energy in them, so it wouldn't be worth it. And that's your macromolecules.